Hi, my name is Sarah Bodenstein, and I'm from the Auburn University Shellfish Lab, and I'm going to talk about my study investigating summer triploid mortality in the northern Gulf of Mexico. So I did my study with Chrysostria virginica, or the eastern oyster, which is grown along the east coast of the United States and also down around through the Gulf of Mexico. And before 2008, there wasn't a ton of off-bottom oyster aquaculture in the Gulf of Mexico region. However, that's changed dramatically from now until then. For example, in Alabama alone, there are now as of 2016, there are over 13 oyster farms. There are now more. And in 2016, they were able to harvest 2.6 million pounds of oysters, averaging around $2 million. So there's a lot of room, room for growth in this industry. But one possible um, problem that farmers are facing is high summer mortalities that affect both triploid and diploid oysters. Triploid oysters are these nice big guys with three chromosomes instead of the usual two chromosomes that diploid oysters have. They're bred specifically to have this extra chromosome, which makes them sterile, giving them more energy in the summer for growth and higher meat quality. And they're incredibly popular with farmers. An estimate in 2014 saw that 91% of, of farmers' plantings were triploid oysters in the state of Virginia. And for Auburn Shellfish Lab seed orders in 2017, 36 million triploid seed were ordered as opposed to only 6 million diploid seed. So they're incredibly popular, but despite all their advantages, some farmers are noticing that triploids are dying at unexpectedly higher rates during the summer, which is a huge problem if you're losing 30% of your crop during one summer season. Some research has already been done about this topic. Um, Cheney in Washington did some research with the Pacific oyster, and you can see that this is percent mortality on the y-axis at two different sites over, I think, an eighth-month period. And where these red circles are are high spikes in triploid mortality as opposed to diploid mortality down here. So we saw that all these spikes where triploids had significantly higher mortality happened during the summer months in July and August. Additionally, a previous master's student at the Auburn Shellfish Lab studied triploid mortality in Alabama, specifically at four different sites, and she saw that across three sites, these three right here, one, two, three, this gray bar, triploid mortality was significantly higher than diploid mortality. So there is something going on here. Um, and a lot of farmers think that this higher mortality might be due to farm stressors that are being induced on the oysters, such as desiccating and tumbling. And during the summer months when the water temperature gets much hotter, these farm stressors disproportionately affect triploid oysters and cause them to die at higher rates during the summer. So I set out to test this theory testing two possible causes of triploid summer mortality, two possible farm stressors tumbling, and desiccation. And based on the results of my study, I hope to recommend some best farm management practices to try to avoid these summer losses. So I had three different sites across the Gulf of Mexico, one in Grand Isle, Louisiana, one in uh, Deer Island, Mississippi, and one in Grand Bay, Alabama. Here's a picture of my first site at Grand Isle in Louisiana. The type of gear I used was oyster grow cages, which are those big cages attached to the floats, so oyster bags can be stuffed inside the cages, and then the floats can be flipped up. The cages are suspended within the water column, and the oysters are allowed to feed. Here's one of my sites at Deer Island. Additionally, as many people have said already today, the cages can be flipped up so the oysters can be desiccated and exposed to that ambient air to get rid of the biofouling that tends to accumulate on them. And here's my last site at Grand Bay in Alabama. At every site, I had seven oyster grow cages, and each cage contained three bags of diploids and three bags of triploid oysters. A little bit more about the stressors that I induced on the oysters. I tumbled them, which is when oysters are put through a, la a large cylindrical mechanical grater with differently sized holes. This allows the oysters to be sorted by size and also chips off the fragile edges of the oyster shell, giving them a nice deep cup that the restaurant industry really desires in oysters. And I also desiccated them, which is just exposing them to the ambient air. I had two levels of tumbling. I either tumbled the oysters or I did not tumble them. 
and four levels of desiccation, zero hours of desiccation, 18 hours, 24 hours, and 48 hours. This led to a total of seven treatments, so each one of those seven cages at each site was subjected to one of these stressor treatments. I did not have a zero hours of desiccation by tumble treatment, because by tumbling the oysters, you have to take them out of the water, so they would be desiccating. So that's why I only had seven treatments instead of eight treatments. And I imposed this stressor trial in July when the water temperatures were very warm. And one month later, I went back and assessed the mortality of all my oysters at all the sites. And in addition, I tracked growth rates of all the oysters throughout the entire summer, from May to September. Some of the results that I obtained in this experiment are as follows. For growth rate, this, e this is growth rate along this y-axis for all the sites over the entire summer. And I found that any desiccation, regardless of the ploidy of the oyster, decreased the growth rate significantly. So you can see this 24-hour desiccation treatment and 48-hour desic tre desiccation treatment, those oysters had significantly slower growth than oysters desiccated for less time. Now, if I just look at the Grand Isle site, the only factor that had an effect on growth rate at this site was ploidy. So this is the triploid line, this blue line, and they had significantly faster growth rate than diploid oysters throughout the whole summer. And I also saw a similar trend at Deer Island triploid oysters. This blue line right here grew significantly faster than diploids throughout the summer. And at those two sites, only ploidy affected the growth rate, not any of the stressor treatments. At the Grand Bay site, I saw that the stressor treatments did have an effect on growth rate. Any amount of desiccation all these dotted lines are 18 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours of desiccation, significantly reduce the growth rate regardless of the ploidy of the oyster at the Grand Bay site. Also, I saw an interaction between ploidy and tumbling. So I saw that triploid oysters who were tumbled, this dotted blue line grew significantly slower than triploid oysters that were not tumbled. However, this difference was not seen in triploid oysters, in diploid oysters, sorry. Diploid oysters, whether they were tumbled or not, had the exact same growth rate as each other. It only significantly decreased growth rate in the triploid oysters, which was interesting. Now, when I shift to look at mortality, at the Graham Bay site, I saw that triploids had a higher mortality than diploids, but I only saw this effect of ploidy at the Grand Isle site. I had expected to see this trend of triploids dying at a faster rate than diploids at the majority, if not all, of my sites, but we only saw it at this one site in Louisiana, which was very interesting. We did see that the stressor treatments had an effect on all oysters at the site, regardless of ploidy. Oysters desiccated for more than 24 hours had increased mortality, and in addition, oysters that were tumbled had higher mortality than oysters that were not tumbled. We saw this same pattern in the Grand Bay site. You can see right here, oysters desiccated for more than 24 hours had much higher mortality than oysters that were not desiccated, and oysters that were tumbled had increased mortality when compared to oysters that were not tumbled. Now, in the Deer Island site, we saw an interaction between the two stressors. Oysters that were desiccated for 24 hours and tumbled had significantly higher mortality than oysters that were only desiccated for 24 hours. And we see this again. Oysters desiccated for 48 hours and tumbled had significantly higher mortality than oysters that were only desiccated for 48 hours. And it's interesting to note that the oysters that were desiccated for a shorter amount of time but also tumbled had higher mortality than oysters that were desiccated for a longer amount of time, 48 hours, but not tumbled. So we really see an additive effect of those stressors on mortality. So based on all of the results that I got, some conclusions I drew were triploid oysters were able to maintain their growth advantage over diploid oysters despite all the stress that we were imposing on them throughout the summer. And regardless of the ploidy of oysters, desiccation really had a negative impact on growth rate of those oysters. In terms of mortality, we only saw that triploids died at a significantly higher rate than diploids at one site. And we didn't see triploids dying at a higher rate than diploids who are exposed to the same stressor treatment. Both ploides reacted similarly to every stressor treatment that we inflicted on them. And this leads us to conclude that 
triploids died at a higher rate at that one site because cer of certain environmental factors at that site, possibly higher salinity fluctuations or a low DO event, but not because of any of the farm stressors that we imposed upon them. The stressors did have an impact on overall oyster mortality, but not specifically on triploid oysters. So tumbling stress and any desiccation stress over 24 hours significantly increased the mortality of oysters during the summer. And also at that one site, Deer Island, we saw that additive effect of stressors. So I would recommend, or we would recommend, not to desiccate your oysters for more than 24 hours during the summer to try to avoid that mortality. And also, it might be wise to let your oysters rest between tumbling and desiccation routines to try to avoid that additive effect of stressors. Um, I just want to thank everyone who helped me with this project, and are there any questions? So for the oysters that were desiccated and tumbled, I took them out of the oyster grows, drove them to the tumbler, tumbled them, and then left them out of the water for the remaining time they had. So the 18 hours they went back the next morning, the 24-hour oysters. We put them all back in the cages at 18 hours, but the 18-hour ones were flipped over. The 24-hour ones sat in the cages until 24 hours was up, and then they were flipped over, and then the 48 hours ones sat in the cages for an additional day, and then were flipped back over. Um, I think my results are different because of the different water quality parameters that the oysters were subjected to throughout the summer. Uh, going into this experiment, I believed that the farm stress would be the trigger that would cause triploids to die at higher rates, but I think it has much more to do with at each individual site, what happens throughout that particular summer, what the salinity fluctuations are, what the DO fluctuations are. Um, if there's like super extreme temperature fluctuations, I think that has a lot more to do with it than um, even like the same site over the course of multiple summers could have totally different water quality parameters and totally different reactions of triploid mortality.